Hello and welcome to Justin DeWire Artistry. Today we're going to be doing a charcoal drawing of a baby elephant taking his first steps into a pool of water in a forest clearing. I'm going to be using willow charcoal on drawing cartridge, a 220 GSM cartridge and the size is A2 or 42 by 59 centimeters. During the drawing I'm going to be demonstrating some techniques and I'll give you guys some tips and some helpful information that hopefully will assist you in doing your own charcoal drawings. If anything isn't clear in the drawing please let me know, drop me a comment below and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Thanks for tuning in and let's get cracking straight to the action. To start the drawing off I've made a couple of lines on the paper to help me map out the composition. These give me a visual guide to line up the different parts of the drawing. I roughly mark out the outline of the baby elephant first. Next I mark out the shapes of some stones in the foreground to the right. I'm using a reference photo for this drawing and I keep looking back at it to check that I'm drawing the shapes in correctly. Now I draw in the trunk of mummy elephant. I'm just making basic shapes and outlines to find out where I want everything to sit on the paper. As the drawing takes shape I'll change my mind and that's okay. I'll just rub out what I don't like and I'll draw it in again. It doesn't matter if the charcoal doesn't erase fully, those marks will just be the start of the background. I'm using the side of the charcoal stick to roughly fill in the dark areas of the elephants. This allows me to cover a lot of ground quickly. I'll keep filling in the dark areas, pressing hard when I want to make dark areas and pressing lighter for areas with more light. As the charcoal wears down, sometimes I lose the last little piece. That's fine because I always have more charcoal on hand. I keep filling the picture in and building up layers of charcoal. I'm using drawing paper with a medium tooth, which is the roughness of the surface of the paper. The more tooth the paper has, the more layers of charcoal it will hold. I'm using my fingers to smooth the charcoal into the paper. This is called blending. It rubs the loose powder into the tooth of the paper, filling in the gaps and creating a smoother finish. I'm drawing in some lines from the top left of the paper. This is where the light is streaming down into the clearing and those marks will help me to define the sunbeams later. I want to get the darkest areas as dark as possible. Once I know what the darkest tone of the drawing is, I will find it easier to get all of the mid and light tones correct. I'm adding in some indications of foliage in the background. Just making rough marks, I don't need to draw in every leaf and twig. Now I have my kneadable eraser and I'm drawing in some highlights. The eraser is soft and pliable. This means that I can shape it to achieve sharp lines or unique patterns in the drawing. A side note, on erasers. In the ancient world, small pieces of sandstone or pumice were used to remove mistakes from papyrus or parchment. The rough edges removed the ink by taking a layer of the surface of the document, allowing for a correction. Red erasers were used to remove pencil marks. Even in relatively recent times when rubber erasers were in wide use, red could be a cost-effective alternative. Modern erasers were invented in 1770 by Edward Nan, an English engineer. At that time the word rubber was used for any item used for rubbing pencil marks off paper. Nan developed small cubes of a substance known as gum elastic and during the following decade the name rubber came to refer to the substance the eraser was made from instead of the eraser itself. The raw rubber perished over time and early rubber erasers were not common. After Charles Goodyear discovered the process of vulcanization, a process that cured rubber, in 1839 more durable rubber erasers came into use. Finally in 1858 a patent was registered for attaching an eraser to the end of the pencil by Hyman Lippmann in the USA. In 1932 Arthur Dremel of the US invented the electric eraser. A replaceable cylinder of eraser material held by a chuck was driven by the axis of a motor. The rotation speed allowed less pressure to be used which reduced damage to the paper. Kneaded erasers, also called putty erasers, can be formed into a point or sharp edge for detailed erasing. 
They can be molded into a textured surface and used like a reverse stamp to give texture, or they can be touched lightly to lighten lines or shading without completely erasing them. They become saturated over time and will erase less and less as they age. Kneaded erasers can be used to draw highlights and are particularly effective in soft mediums such as pastel and charcoal. Kneadable erasers work really well with charcoal and other soft drawing mediums. You can use a kneadable eraser to add a lot of detail and definition to areas already covered in charcoal. The light source is in the top left where the sunbeams are streaming down and this means that everything facing that direction will have a highlight on it. Everything facing away will be in darkness and shadow. I'm drawing in a few simple lines on the elephant's trunk and legs. This is to indicate the wrinkly skin in those areas. I can sharpen up the edges of roughly drawn shapes and the drawing will look more refined. I don't need to draw a sharp line around everything to define it. I can just create contrast in the dark and light to suggest the edge of things. These are called soft edges, when the edge is created by a change in tone or colour rather than with line. I blend in the water at the front left corner to smooth that area and draw in some reflections on the surface with the eraser to indicate the dappled light coming through the forest canopy. Alternating between the eraser and the charcoal, I start to pick out more details in the background. I don't want to draw every detail and will just use random marks to hint at sunlight and shadow on the foliage behind the pool. Using the eraser in my finger, I pick out some detail on baby elephant. Shadows aren't solid masses of dark. They also have light and dark areas within them. Picking some of these out will add some definition to the drawing, making it appear more realistic. I continue to add touches to the water to create the appearance of further reflections and dappling light. Next, I fill in the dark mass of mummy elephant in a vague and undefined way. I'm trying to achieve an impression of a strong, looming presence that is there to guide and protect baby. Using the charcoal, I draw the lines even darker. This strengthens the shadow areas. I take this opportunity to tidy up some of the edges of the shapes and add in some detail to areas such as the baby elephant's ear and tail. I mark out some areas of shadow in the water. The water has ripples from where the baby elephant has stepped into it. I draw these in roughly in keeping with the style of the drawing. I sharpen up the trunk of mummy elephant and blend some additional charcoal into the area to the left of it. This is to reduce the contrast in that spot to bring the focus back to the areas highlighted on mummy elephant's trunk. I draw in some areas of shadow on the stones in the front right. This will increase the sense of depth in the drawing. Working on the background again, I start to knock out any remaining white areas on the right hand side. I don't want any of these to remain as they will reduce the impact of the light and shadows on the baby elephant, which is the intended focal point of the drawing. I work over any remaining areas with too much contrast to keep increasing the focus on the elephant. Next, I added layers of shadow to the water to deepen the impression of ripples. Alternating between charcoal and eraser, I add more contrast to the baby elephant and the rocks in front. I do this by further lightening the highlights and darkening the shadows. Finally, I take the eraser and from the top left I draw in the impression of sunbeams streaming down. To draw long straight lines, I set the eraser at the top of the stroke and then I focus on the destination. I don't watch the path of the eraser as it travels, I only look at where I want it to finish. My hand will take care of the rest. The drawing is nearly complete. I will finish by adding some final touches to the highlights and tidy up any areas where my sunbeams have stolen some definition from the baby elephant. I add in a few final touches to the water and mark out a couple of vague impressions of tree trunks in the background. Once the final touches are done, the drawing is finished and ready for a signature. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you like it and found it informative and helpful. I love feedback so please leave me a comment below to tell me what you thought and if there is anything you would like to see me cover in a future video don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see this channel grow. That's it for now but stay tuned for more artistic adventures with Justin Dwyer Artistry. Have a wonderful day and bye bye.